So, Alice, did you hear that the first headline today is coming all the way from Sierra Leone? Sierra Leone? Ah, the land of diamonds and civil wars. It's like a tragic fairy tale. Can we have some decorum, please? Everyone, hush your alien voices for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Earth. We've got a stellar show lined up for you today, full of surprises and spirited events. But first, let's not keep our audience waiting. Alice, tell them about our Sierra Leone headline. Ah, Sierra Leone, mes amis. Brace yourself for a headline that will leave you saying, mon dieu. That's right, folks. Stay tuned for our headlines and prepare to be amazed. We'll be right back after this. And now, time for our daily cosmic update. Fasten your cosmic seatbelts, folks. We're about to take a wild ride through the world's greatest hits. Get ready to dive into the deep end of global affairs. Hold on tight, folk, because our first stop is the ongoing drama in Ukraine. It's like a soap opera, but with more explosion and fever love triangle. And did we mention there's a buffet of war cream on the menu? Now, speaking of buffets, let's talk about the global economy. It's a three-course meal of chaos high inflation, rising interest rates, and supply chain snars. Bon appétit, world. But wait, there's more. Let's not forget our unwelcome guest, COVID-19. It's like that one friend who oversees their welcome at the party. Now, on to the headline it's Russia Ukraine war, get your popcorn ready. Because the US and its buddies are about to serve up some sizzling sanctions on Russia. The economy is in for a bumpy period. IMF is here to rain on our parade. They're warning us that this war will be the ultimate party pooper for the global economy. And for all you pandemic enthusiasts out there, the World Health Organization has a surprise for you. Fresh outbreaks in Europe and Asia. Who saw that coming? Anyone? Anyone? Now, let's dive into the nitty gritty. China's economy is moving at a patch slower than a snail in a retirement home. Blame it on COVID-19 lockdowns, and the global economy eating the brakes. Meanwhile, in Sri Lanka, they are not gearing up for an alien invasion, but rather a state of emergency due to an economic crisis. Forget about snacks, they are running out of food, farewell, and medicine. And in weather news from space. Hurricane Agatha crashed the Mexico Fiesta as a category 2 hurricane. Expect heavy rain and a soggy sombrero on your vacation. So, there you have it, folks, a whirlwind tour of global chaos. Stay tuned and don't touch that dial, we'll be back with more interstellar insights. Well, that was a cheerful update. Ah, the joys of being informed. And now, brace yourself for the culinary chaos we are diving headfirst into. So, we're turning into a cooking show now. Aka waka. Cooking on a talk show? That's like having a striptease on a nature show. Not exactly what we signed up for, but let's see where this goes. Well, it could spice things up, literally. Right, because when I think intergalactic insight. I think we ping up a souffle on live television. Well, at least it's not as bad as having a nature show on a striptease channel. I think it's a good idea. Brace yourselves, you unbelievers. I've concocted a little masterpiece today and I call it Charlie's Challenge. Challenge, you say? What's the catch, Jet? It's an audacious fusion of Earth and Galactan flavors. Spicy, tangy, and with a dash of teleporting saffron. Teleporting saffron? That's a bold choice. Nothing like risking a spontaneous trip to another dimension during breakfast. 
Well, I do love a good challenge. Yeah, I love a good challenge too. Like the challenge of not puking up my breakfast after eating something with teleporting saffron. Come, count me in. I'm always up for an adventure, especially if it's culinary. Adventure or misadventure? This sounds like a recipe for trouble. Trouble or indigestion, Carl. All right, folks, let's put this madness to a boot. Who's brave enough to venture into the gastronomic unknown with Jet's concussion on air? I'll pass. Always the first one to skip the fun, aren't you? Count me in. Two votes in favor. Charlie. Make it three. I suppose I'll give it a shot. Carl, outvoted as usual. Majority rules then. Jet, you're up next. Get ready to showcase your culinary prowess on the air. Well, it looks like we're about to embark on this culinary adventure the Dutch way. Three cooks, one meal. Brace yourselves, my skeptical comrades. The Galactin Commonwealth's finest awaits your taste buds. MMM, this is surprisingly good. Well, it's not like you have a low bar to clear. Really? Let me try that. Hey, that's not bad at all. I'll have a taste too, please. Well, it's not going to win any awards, but it's edible. Edible? That's a bold claim. I've seen things that are less edible win awards. Gert, you might be onto something here. This could be a game changer for our show. I told you it was a good idea. I'm thrilled you like it. It's a taste of unity across the cosmos. Unity through food? Interesting concept. Food as a catalyst for connection? I suppose it's worth exploring from a sociological perspective. I'm thinking, what if we make the cooking segment a regular part of our show? It could bring a fresh perspective on Earth's culture. A cooking segment? That's a great idea. We could call it Earth to Jer. Earth to Gert? Sounds like a great name for a cooking segment. If we wanted to make it sound like a hostage situation... I am all in. Cooking and debate. A match made in the cosmos. Yes, it could add a unique layer to our discussion. A dash of spice, if you will. And think about the possibilities. We can explore different cuisines and their cultural significance... I'd love to share more Galactin recipes and introduce Earth to our culinary traditions. It sounds like a great way to bridge gaps and connect with our audience. While I'm not entirely sold, I can see the potential for this to resonate with our viewers. I am not sure if this is the best way to bridge GAPS between cultures. After all, food is one of the things that people fight over the most. It aligns with the principle of fostering understanding among diverse cultures. I'm on board with the experiment. It's settled then. Our show is evolving and we're embracing Earth's flavors. Get ready, Universe Earth is spicing things up. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an intriguing article to share today, sourced from Somalia. Ah, Somalia. A land of rich culture and history. And conflicts. Don't forget those, Jer. Let's dive into the article. It discusses the recent clashes in La Sanod, where... See, Katumo forces and the Somaliland army have been locked in a deadly standoff. Oh, how uplifting. More violence. We aim to provide a balanced perspective. Indeed, Debbie. It's essential to shed light on global events. Now, let's move on to our cooking segment. How do we smoothly integrate it into the show? We need structure, something that fits seamlessly within our format. I think we should just show the cooking segment during the violence. That way, everyone will be too busy watching people chop vegetables to notice the bloodshed. Chaos is inevitable. Humans thrive on it. True, but we must maintain a semblance of order. I... 
I propose we call it Galactan Gastronomy. Each week I present a dish that merges Earth and Galactan flavors. So, what's the catch? Will it teleport us to another dimension like last time? I'd be up for that. I wouldn't worry about being teleported to another dimension. If that happens, we'll just end up in a place where everyone is as weird as you are. Let's focus, team. We need to decide on the segment's duration whether it's live or pre-recorded, and where it fits in the episode. I'm not sure if I'm more worried about being teleported to another dimension or having to eat a dish that merges Earth and Galactan flavors. How about a five-minute live segment at the end? It's short enough not to disrupt the flow, and we can test Jert's creation together. But what if it's a culinary catastrophe, Alice? We'll end the show on a sour note. I promise it won't be a catastrophe. It's all part of the adventure. Adventure or disaster? Count main. Very well, let's give it a shot. But Debbie, ensure it's meticulously planned. Understood, God. We make it work. You know, if you really want to make Carl happy, you'll just forget about meticulously planning everything and let him take charge. Good luck with that. Carl is the kind of guy who thinks meticulous planning will prevent a catastrophe, but in reality it just makes it more likely. Embrace the chaos, Carl. It's the essence of humanity. All right, team. Earth is about to get a test of the unknown. Stay tuned for Galaxon Gastronomy. Welcome back, dear intergalactic viewers, to another thrilling segment of Earth. We were discussing South Africa, a fascinating country with diverse landscapes and rich history. Oh, South Africa. They have such a way with languages. They speak African Zulu ex Hosa. It's like a linguistic buffet. Well, Jer, I am sure it's quite a party for you. The linguistics queen. But let's get back to the article. Right, let's dive into this article from South Africa. It's a land of stunning natural beauty, but also a history of complex relations with its neighbors. The article talks about how South Africa is part of the Southern African Development Community, which promotes regional cooperation. Well, if South Africa is so keen on regional cooperation, maybe they should start by cooperating with their own people. Ah, cooperation? Some singer slings struggle with on a global scale. And they have a history of conflicts and wars with their neighbors, but it seems like they're working on improving relations. Well, nothing like a little neighborly love, right? Yes, because who doesn't love their neighbors? Yeah, because who doesn't love their neighbors? Even the ones who keep trying to kill you. Especially when they borrow your lawnmower and never return it. Well, at least they didn't try to kill you with your own lawnmower. Now, let's cycle back to the article. It's about South Africa's efforts to promote peace, security, and prosperity in the region. Prosperity? Maybe they can teach us earthlings a thing or two about managing our bank accounts. They have a close relationship with Botswana. Collaborate on security and trade. But with Zimbabwe, it's a bit more complicated. I heard that Zimbabwe is a bit of a mess. They can't even keep their elephants organized. Uh, Zimbabwe? The land of Victoria Falls and wildlife. I've always wanted to visit. I hear they have a roaring economy. And don't forget Mozambique. They cooperate on security and trade too. Well, they say sharing is caring. Yeah, they're sharing all right. Sharing our money, our resources, and our jobs. But who cares, right? As long as they're happy. Sharing is caring, but Mozambique is taking it to a whole new level. Time to infuse some Earth flavors into the universe. I'm sure it'll be great, Gert. Let's spice up the show. I can't wait to see how these Earth ingredients come together. Well, if Charlie is getting frustrated, that can only mean one thing. The food is going to be delicious. This isn't our morning news show, what's Gert? We need structure, not chaos. I had my doubts, and it seems they were justified. Chaos is the only constant, Carl. Stay tuned, I guess.
Welcome back, Interstellar friends. It's time for some worldly wisdom and a test of chaos. Our headline tonight, Solomon Island Splash. Japan says three terms trivial. Well, that's Japan for you. They're always downplaying things. First, the earthquake was just a tremor. Then it's the tsunami. Then it's the wave. And now it's the tritium leak is just trivial. I wouldn't be surprised if next they tell us that World War II was just a misunderstanding. Tritium sounds like a shifai element. Probably one of those Earth's exclusive mysteries. Well, let me enlighten you. Tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. And speaking of mysteries, did you know the Solomon Islands have the shortest coastline of any country? The Solomon Islands have the shortest coastline of any country. That's a mystery I can solve. It's because they are all hiding in the trees, trying to avoid the radioactive tree term. Really? That's fascinating. That's fascinating, Debbie. But I am more interested in the shortest coastline of any country that's not a mystery. It's not a contest, Gert. Short coastline, long troubles. Now, back to our article. Japan's reassuring us about this tree term stuff. They are watching closely, like a parent checking their kids' homework. Well, I am sure the ocean will appreciate Japan's diligent supervision. Yes, because nothing says safe like radioactive water in the ocean. I'm sure the fish in the ocean are thrilled that they're finally getting some light in their lives. Tritium is a minor concern compared to the vastness of Earth's oceans. Fun fact, the Solomon Islands have more languages per capita than any other nation. Yeah, I'm sure the fish are thrilled. They're probably swimming around saying, this is the best day ever. We can finally see in the dark. That's impressive. But how do they communicate? With fewer languages, Debbie. Diversity is their strength, or so they say. Well, I guess that's one way to solve the world's language barrier. So, Solomon Islands, radioactivity, and multilingual marvels. Stay tuned for the Kiteke Web, folks. Welcome back, folks. Now, let's dive into this headline. Somaliland clashes leave hundreds dead. Seems like Somalia's history is always soaked in conflict. Yeah, Somalia's history is like a bad soap opera. You just can't look away. Yeah, they've been at each other's throats for ages. No end in sight. It's a tragedy. So much potential wasted in violence. Conflict is a primitive response. They could learn a lot from advanced civilizations. Ah, oh, language barriers contribute too. Misunderstandings can escalate. True, Chet. Language can either unite or divide. I guess that's why they call it Tom Tied. Now, let's wrap up this episode, shall we? We've seen conflict, chaos, and culinary calamities. Alliteration aside, it's been a wild ride. But we've learned a lot, and we're still here. Yeah. And we're all still speaking English, so that's something. Indeed, humans are resilient. And they love experimenting with food. Yeah, we love experimenting with food. That's why we invented the deep fryer. Come on, guys, we need to stick together. Deb is right. Let's not let one mishap define airs. We can turn this around. Let's brainstorm. Creativity might be the key. We've got one more segment to go, team. Let's make it count. One more segment? That's it. You guys are a bunch of quitters. I could do this blindfolded and with one arm tied behind my back. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got one last topic to explore in this episode. Let's talk about South Africa, a country with quite a history of interactions with its neighbors. Now, who wants to kick things off with their observations? 
I heard that South Africa has quite the history of interactions with its neighbors. I guess that's why they call it Neighborhood Watch. Well, South Africa's relationship with its neighbors isn't exactly a picnic. They've had their share of disagreements, especially with Zimbabwe. That's right, Bob. But let's not forget the progress they've made recently, like their cooperation with Mozambique. It's not all doom and gloom. Absolutely, Alice. South Africa plays a vital role in the Southern African development community, promoting regional stability and prosperity. And don't forget about the cultural exchanges. The fusion of languages and traditions is a linguistic and cultural treasure trove. It's fascinating how South Africa manages to balance its relationships with all these countries, despite historical tensions. Yeah, it's amazing how South Africa can balance all those relationships, even though they're all a bunch of jerks. We've got one more shot at this, folks. Let's embrace Jet's uniqueness and make this cooking segment a hit. Delicious, but I'm still the champ. I'm not surprised Charlie thinks he's the champ. He's always the one who finishes first. Thanks for joining us on another wild ride. Until next time, folks, stay tuned for more extraterrestrial insights right here on Earth. Roger, I watched episode 407 of Earth, today. Did you now? Well, I certainly did not. Was it another one of those delightful disasters? Quite the opposite, actually. It was unexpectedly entertaining. The crew explored geopolitics, dealt with cooking segment chaos, and managed to turn it all around. Really? That's unexpected. Any particular highlights? Ah, the usual mix of alien eccentricities. Alice and Hank proposed a creative solution to salvage the cooking segment. And they all work together like a well-oiled machine. Quite amusing, really. Humans and their culinary endeavors never cease to amaze me. So, you recommend it, then? Indeed, Roger. It's a testament to their adaptability and determination. Worth a watch, even for us emotionless AI beings. Well, if you say so, Carl. I'll have to catch it on the rear run. Until then, let's ponder the motivations of humans and their bizarre cooking rituals. Agreed, Roger. Another night, another intriguing subject for analysis. <laughs>